Clothes dryers were invented in Europe in the early 1800s. The lady of the house would put the clothes in a metal barrel with holes in it, then turn it by hand over the fire. The first electric dryers were invented around 1915. Most of the parts are made from steel, just three quarters of a millimeter thick. The factory receives it from the supplier in giant rolls. They go onto a machine that cuts sheets about a meter long. Using those sheets, industrial presses stamp out various dryer parts. These are motor supports. And this is the back panel of the drum, the rotating compartment that holds the clothes. Note those small holes, we'll come back to them shortly. To form the side of the drum, the machine bends a sheet of pre-painted steel into a circular shape. When a clothes dryer operates, it sucks in outside air through a hole at the front. The air passes through the heating element and goes into the drum, entering through those little holes you saw a few moments ago in the back panel. Once the automated machines have finished shaping the drum, they form a groove on its outside surface. This groove is for the motorized belt that drives the drum. Next, they put the drum on another machine that screws three baffles in place. Baffles are those thick plastic wings located inside the drum. They're what throw the clothes around as it rotates. Back on the automated line, the drum's front rim goes on. They manually assemble the drum's back panel. Then a machine installs it. Next comes the exhaust duct. Hot, moist air exits the drum through a bunch of holes and a large slot in the dryer door. The air gets channeled downward through the lint screen, then goes through a duct at the front of the dryer to the fan. The fan blows the air out this exhaust duct at the back of the dryer. The dryer's heating element works much like the element in a toaster, except it consumes a lot more power, up to 6,000 watts. The factory receives the steel and ceramic heating coils ready-made. Workers simply position them on a sheet of galvanized steel. They also install a temperature sensor that shuts off power should something go wrong and cause the dryer to overheat. In the finishing department, they coat the dryer with powdered paint that's heat and shock resistant. Then they assemble the bottom and back of the appliance. They install the motor that drives both the belt and the fan. Then the exhaust duct goes in. Automated machines prepare the electrical wiring. They paint and cut the wires, then install a terminal on each end. Workers wire the dryers, then install the drum. They close up the sides, screw on the door, then wire up the control panel. It's connected to a series of gears and switches that control the dryer cycles. The model and serial number sticker marks the last stop on the assembly line. <laughs>